Hello students, this is Ms. Dalton and this is video 10.1, Multiplying and Dividing Rationals. Okay, so let's review first from the previous unit on simplifying rational expressions. The first thing you want to do is you want to factor the numerator and the denominator completely. Then you can cancel any common factors in both the numerator and the denominator. You must cancel entire factors only, not portions of factors. And then what remains is the simplified expression. You can multiply any re remaining factors if you want, but you do not have to at that point. So how is this going to work for multiplying rational expressions? You will still factor the numerator and the denominator completely. But when we're multiplying, we multiply straight across. So we multiply numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. That means that you can cancel any factors that are common to both a numerator and a denominator. And it doesn't matter if, it, if it's in one, like if it's in the right fraction and the left fraction, because when you multiply straight across, those numerators will multiply together and the denominators will multiply together. You must cancel entire factors only, just like in simplifying, and you must cancel factors in pairs, so one numerator and one denominator only. Then you can multiply remaining factors if you wish, um, but again, you do not have to. All right, dividing rational expressions. When you divide fractions, you want to remember that you can't divide by a fraction, so instead you're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So you will change division to multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. And then you follow the same steps for multiplying. So dividing just adds that extra step, which turns it into a multiplication problem. All right, let's look at this first example. So we do have a multiplication problem. So remember, we're going to multiply all our numerators together. In other words, these will all become uh, simplified together. And then the, de the denominators will get multiplied together too. So therefore, anything that's in the numerator could cancel with something in the denominator. It doesn't matter which side it's on. Now this is not, we do not have to factor this because there's no addition or subtraction here. It's just uh, um, monomials that are getting divided. So let's go ahead and start. I usually just start on the left side and start uh, canceling off anything that I can. So the 5 will go into the 15 three times, so that'll change to a 3. x squared, I can cancel x squared here with two of the x's from here, so this would just be x squared. And then the y cubed, I could cancel from three of the y's here, so I would just be left with y. And then 27, 3 goes into 27 nine times. x to the fifth, well, I do have an x here, and I have an x squared here. So that would become x to the third. So let's cancel off all of those and, and divide out an x to the third, so we would have an x squared here. One more thing that I recognize is that the 3 will cancel into the 9 and make that 3. So let's figure out what we have left over. So in the numerator, if I go all across the numerator, I just have 3x squared. In the denominator, I have this y and another y, and that's it. So if I multiply those together, that would be y squared. So this is your final answer. Okay, example two, let's go ahead and factor everything. So if I take this first numerator, I notice that it has negative five X as a common factor. When I divide that out, I'd be left with X plus, oh, sorry, not plus. X minus four. Okay, so this is factored. The net other numerator would factor as x plus 4 times x minus 1. 
the left denominator has a common factor of x, so I would divide out x, and then I'd have x minus 1 left. And then the right side denominator is a difference of squares. Since 16 is a perfect square, we would put x plus 4 times x minus 4. Okay, at this point, you're just canceling common factors. So anything that's in the numerator can cancel with something in the denominator. So <clears throat> we've got the x minus 1 that will cancel with this x minus 1. We have x plus 4 that cancels with x plus 4 here. We have x minus 4 that cancels with x minus 4 here. And then we also have the x that cancels with the x here. And so the only thing that you have left over is that negative 5 in the numerator. So that would be your answer. All right, let's move on to another multiply problem. So go ahead and factor everything. In the first numerator, I notice that it has a common factor of 2x, which would be left with x minus 5. x plus 3, I'm going to put parentheses around that to recognize that that is one factor. In other words, the plus, you cannot split that up and cancel off an x. So just put it in parentheses so you can remind yourself that that has to go as a group x squared minus 25, that's a difference of squares too, so it would be x plus 5 times x minus 5. And then 2x squared would just stay as it is. <clears throat> so I notice that I can take the x minus 5s and cancel. I also have a 2 that will cancel with this 2 here. And the x will cancel with this x squared and make it an x. Um, everything else does not cancel. So what do you have left in the numerator? In the numerator, I have x plus 3. In the denominator, I have x times x plus 5. Now, don't make the mistake of canceling off the x in the numerator with the x in the denominator. This is a group. x plus 3 is a group. You cannot split that up. So this would be your final answer. Okay, now let's change to a division problem. The only extra step when you divide is that you need to change that second fraction you want to change it to a multiply by the reciprocal. So when I factor that second uh, fraction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my factors of the denominator and I'm going to put them up here. And I'm going to take the factors of my numerator and I'm going to put them down here. And I'm going to change it into a multiplication problem. The first fraction you go ahead and factor as normal. So you would have x minus 7 times x plus 3. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue on with this fraction. 5x plus 15 has a common factor of 5. So 5 times x plus 3. Okay, but when I factor the second fraction, again, I'm going to take my numerator factors and put them on the bottom over here. So x squared plus 3x minus 70 factors as x plus 10 times x minus 7. So again, notice that I moved that to the denominator. And then x squared minus 100, I'm going to move that to the numerator, and that's a difference of squares, so that would be x plus 5, I'm sorry, x plus 10 times x minus 10. All right. So now we don't have this anymore. This is what we have. Um, so if there's anything in the numerator, cancels with something in the denominator. So x plus 10, that cancels with x plus 10 here. We also have an x minus 7 that will cancel with an x minus 7 here. And we have an x plus 3 that cancels with x plus 3 here. So the only thing that I'm left with in the numerator is that x minus 10. And in the denominator, the only thing I'm left with is 5. But again, don't divide the 5 into a 10. You can't do that because that x minus 10 
is a group. So this is your final answer. Okay, last example. Um, it's a division problem again, so you are going to change that second fraction to uh, the reciprocal and multiply it. Now that second fraction, remember, is over one. So when I change it to a multiplication by the reciprocal, then when I flip it, one is now going to be on in the numerator, and then the factors of 3x squared minus 2x will be in the denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. That has a common factor of x, so that would be times 3x minus 2. Okay, so now I don't have this anymore. I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. Go ahead and factor your numerator here, which would be, I would have 3x here, and then in the other factor I would have x, and I need to factor negative 10 to where that works. So let's see, this would be a plus five, and this would be a minus two. So then I've got 15x minus two x, which does in fact equal that positive 13. Okay, so this is factored, and then six x squared, I'm just gonna leave as that. So now you can start canceling. Well, the three x minus two cancels with three x minus two, but it looks like that's all that, that uh, cancels because I cannot cancel the x with the x squared since they are both in the denominator. So now in the numerator, I just have x plus five times one, which would just be x plus five, divided by, then I would wanna multiply the six x squared times x and make that six x to the third. And then that's it, because again, this is a group, so you cannot divide out those x's. So this would be your final answer. All right, hopefully this has been helpful. Please make sure you have your notes filled out and come to class with any questions that you have.